This is Open to Hope Radio, featuring Dr. Gloria Horsley and her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley, coming to you on behalf of the Open to Hope Foundation, dedicated to those who are looking for hope after loss. Now, here's Dr. Gloria. Welcome to Grief Relief. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my co-host and daughter. Dr. Heidi Horsley. We're talking about the orphan spirit today, and we are here with our guest, Danita Ogundaga. And Danita is the founder of Hope Starts Today and the Orphan No More podcast. She lost both of her parents by the age of 21. She teaches on the topics of grief, restoration, hope, and resilience. She is currently getting her doctorate degree, and she is the author of the audiobook Overcoming the Orphan Spirit. Hi, Danita. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, you all. I'm happy to be here with you. You all. Now, where are you located with that accent? We are in Fayetteville, Georgia, but I am originally from Chester, North Carolina. Well, tell us about this idea of the orphan spirit, and maybe start out by talking about the death of your parents as a young adult. When I was 21 years old, I had lost my parents. Um, in between that time, my grandfather passed away. My, um, my, my favorite cousin was murdered. Um, and just the process of my mother and father, they were 47 and 48 years old. Um, so wow. they were very, very young, very young. Um, they were both ministers, had a very um, deep foundation in God, and had instilled that into us as we, had, you know, as we were growing up all through life. And uh, my father had three kidney transplants and 55 operations, but he died from a massive heart attack. And he was my mm-hmm. Superman. So it was kind of like, you know, um, he would always be very resilient and bounce back from whatever happened to him. So when it came time for them to tell me that he had actually passed away, I was in disbelief. I actually had to go and see the body, look him in the face, and realize that he was not coming back. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother wow. passed, you know, shortly after that. My mother um she had breast cancer, um, and it was pretty much as she was sleeping one day, I had gone into the room after coming home from school, and I saw that her breast had turned purple. Um, and when I woke her up and asked her what was going on, she kind of, you know, said, God is going to heal me. And I think my mother had entered sort of like a denial stage where she didn't really want to face the fact that she something was going on with her. And she kept from that moment saying that she wanted divine healing. Not that she gave up on life, but she was ready to go once my father passed away. Like her health began to decline, and um, she she just got to the point where you know neighbors would come home and find her in the driveway. You know she had been tired trying to drive herself to um, her chemotherapy appointments, and after a while, it had just got to a point where she had just you know she had just come to the point of just really wanting to go and be with him. And I can understand what they say about people that are married and have hearts that are broken and hearts that really want mm-hmm. to rest with their loved one. Um, and, you know, I don't really understand the concept of what people would say before with death. You know, how is it you can love someone so deeply on this earth and then just cut off, be cut off from them and just forget as though they ever existed when they, when they die? It's just absolutely impossible. The idea of continuing bonds is so real. So what what about for you, though? There you are. Your parents are only in their 40s. This is not like, you know, uh, pretty hard to be philosophical when you're 21 and you just lost both your parents. What about you? How many years ago was this? Uh, this was about 16 years ago. And the realness in, in this um, was that, you know, I didn't really have the, the understanding that I have now. This has actually been a process. So for anyone that says, you know, that grief is instant for them, you know, they can absolutely be healed overnight, then, you know, I I bid them kudos. But um, in reality, you know, it wasn't that way with me. Um, When I realized that my mother and father um, were gone, it was almost as if the life was knocked out of me. Um, I began a spiral of um, just trying to escape and numb myself from the pain. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, not to be too raw, but I had entered into drug use. Um, I had had a lot of different relationships of trying to find a father figure, Um, got involved with a lot of relationships of men who were much older than I was trying to have a father figure, as I said before. I was an orphan. 
I was an orphan. I had just turned 21, and I remember, um, you know, on my 21st birthday, you know, I just remember just, just writing in my journal and just feeling so alone. And from that point, I did not really understand the concept of the orphan spirit. I just knew that it was something that had come into my mind and something that I was feeling immensely. Um, you know, the people that, that always say that they're going to be there after the funeral ends, the next day you look for those people. And I know that many of them say it in well wishes, but the fact is a lot of them just don't know what to do when the, <laughs> when the crack of, of grief begins to really settle in and you realize that person is not going to come back. So what, mm-hmm. what turned you around? What happened in your life? A series of events. Um, as I said before, my foundation had always been in God. Um, however, my identity was so deeply wrapped up in my parents. And so they were essentially the core of my existence. And when they died, it was as if I had, had been core, just like you core an apple. So I was walking mm-hmm. around like a zombie. I was excelling very well in school. I was, you know, an A student, B student at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, it was there on that campus um, that I had an encounter with God. And um, at mm-hmm. the time, you know, I was still smoking weed and, you know, using drugs or whatever, but I started a poetry reading on campus. It was called Just Right Entertainment. And um, that was something that came to me as a result of the loss of my parents. And every Friday we would have a poetry reading on campus, and I realized the expression of being able to use poetry, it began to heal me. It began to help me to you know, write those love letters that I needed to write to my father or my mother and ask them, well, what is it that you think of me? Who am I? What am I to become? I I don't even know who, who, (laughs) I know God through you all, but now that you're gone, who is this God? So it Mm -hmm. began there as a way for me to begin to explore and identify who God is. And it was really at that point that I began to have a personal relationship with him. And um, from that point, using writing and expressive therapy of that type, um, I began to go on the journey of just writing and, you know, helping other people heal, and it never really stopped. I've just, I started then, and I've never stopped developing different programs and venues that can help people to express what they're feeling inside. You know, at that age, at that young age, you're supposed to be able to leave home. Home is not supposed to leave you, and that's pretty traumatic when you're not able to make the break, go to college, come back for vacation or whatever, work and come back or do what you do and learn how to leave home, home left you, which which is really traumatic, don't you think, Heidi? Yeah, I think that's a great way of saying it, too. And I love that Danita was, you know, she was without an anchor. She was without her go-to people to ask for advice when she needed it. And all of a sudden, she kind of got lost her way, but then... It was interesting, Mom, when you said what was, how did she turn it, you know, start finding hope. And I love the idea of beginning to express yourself through poetry and talk about what you're feeling inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Powerful. Yeah, because I, I began to realize, you know, um, when my mother and father passed away, it was almost instantaneously when I was in college, um, I started having um, problems with my stomach. And it was really to the point of uh, gastroenteritis and ulcers. Mm. And it was really because I was trying to hold and suppress and, you know, try to um, really um, medicate myself and medicate the pain. I basically pierced everything that you could possibly pierce on your body. Um, and, and in the quiet moment, when it was, was just too, too silent, um, I just began to really just, you know, I never had an al- a, a sip of alcohol in my life, but I found myself doing conflicting things, like reading the Bible while holding a joint in my hand and just, you know, going into different types of, um, you know, using Ouija boards, whatever I could possibly do to try to find a way to connect to my parents, you know, because mm-hmm. I just could not accept the fact that they were gone. And when you mentioned the point about, you know, home leaving me, um, it, it was really something, you know, to the point where a lot of my memory was really lost with my hometown, uh, which was Kenston, North Carolina, um, for a very long time, up until I would say about maybe four years ago, I was not really able to even understand or, or visualize what my mother or father looked like. Um, I was not really able to remember um, my childhood growing up, you know, so my sense of place really left in many ways because I had really developed um, what what some would call the characteristics of the symptomology of PTSD because, 
the traumatic experience affected me in so many ways. It's like the communication with family members, the communication with my siblings, and not necessarily being able to communicate the grief that I was feeling with them. It became a, a really a major problem. So a lot of that was really trying to, to find out how can I go and get the memories that I needed. Who you know, I go? one of the things that, uh, that comes up for me when you're talking about that is, one of the big fears when we talk to people who are in early grief is that they will forget. And I try to mm -hmm. tell them that the memories will come back. Right, Heidi? Absolutely. I'm thinking as Janita is talking about this, that her, tra her trauma of losing both of her parents and her intense grief was getting in the way of her memories. Do you feel like that, Janita? Yeah. It sounds like you were able to access those memories, and I'm wondering how you did that eventually for those out well, there that are afraid they're going to forget. Yeah, I mean, I, without a doubt, the memories did leave. And I, as I was saying a couple of, maybe a couple of years ago, about three years ago, my husband was preparing to take us to, um, to Gabon, Central Africa, which is the um, home place of his parents. And um, I remember we were leaving about 3 o'clock that morning to go to the airport. And it was as almost as if, you know, prior to this time, I had, you know, you know, been, you know, reading the, the Bible and talking to friends. I did grief counseling. I did intense grief therapy. Um, you know, just really availing, you know, to God and petitioning him to help me to remember. I'm ready to remember because I, I wanted to have the fullness of my mom and my dad, you know, because someone had told me, you know, as I said before, during the grief process, just forget. How can you forget someone that you love so much? It's just not possible. And a lot of times with the orphan spirit, it's really about realizing that even though our mother and our father, you know, they birthed us, before the foundations of the world, we were created from God. So it was just about how I could live this life by putting God at my center. And once I did that, I really would believe that he gave me the gift and of my memory. He started giving me the gift of my memory back. So on the way to Gabon, before we left the airport, I pulled out a picture of my father, and I told my husband, I said, I think that I'm ready to finally put this picture up so that I can be able to let my daughter know who her, her grandfather is, this man and this woman that I've been speaking so much about. I'm ready to share, to share, her, uh, to share them with her. So um, it was just a beautiful moment, and I would never forget that. And as, as I said, since then, parts of that, that time and that place um, in Kenston has been coming back to me. Wow, that's wonderful. I love that. Now, could you uh, tell people, I know people are listen, you know, thinking, wow, I, I want to know more about this. So where can people find you? Well, I am on the web at Um at We have taken quite a bit of a journey since... Um, you know, uh, having Just Right Entertainment at the University of North Carolina, we've kind of moved from small book groups to small fellowship groups to coffee houses. We've pretty much done it all. Um, I recently started a podcast several years ago um, called the Orphan No More Podcast, which is now called Grief Talk. Um, so pretty much everything that we've done with the orphan spirit and just really encouraging people to restore themselves by restoring their relationship with God through that point, um, it's kind of led to what we are calling now grief talk, and that's pretty much helping people to quiet the silent storms that are going on inside of them and letting people know that despite what culture says about the fact that we have to rush through the grief process, I'm just letting people know that it is okay to take the time that you need to take to grieve. It's okay to go through the process to restore yourself because once you are restored, you can help restore others. Thank you so much for being on the show today and for all the wonderful work you're doing. Thanks, everybody, for listening today, and God bless. You've been listening to Open to Hope Radio, hosted by Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley. Like today's edition, all of our past programs are available on demand at opentohope.com, along with helpful articles, videos, resources, and links to help get you through the toughest time of your life. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and sign up for our monthly newsletter. Again, that's opentohope.com. Check it out today. Then be sure to stop by next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time when we'll be posting another edition of Open to Hope Radio. Remember, others have been where you are. They made it through, and you can too, as long as you're open to hope.